what is the likelihood of the H1N1 vaccine being made mandatory? And can one and and how should one object? Well, um, the vaccine is not mandatory. The vaccine is a recommendation from the Center of Disease Control. <clears throat> and what we're trying to do is explain to people why it is important to be protected by it's no mandatory by any means. And what was the second one? Um, and, and, and how gave us a I just raised my hand. I don't give a shot. Well, there is no reason to change. You just don't, don't get the vaccine if you don't want to get it. I mean, this is not like a school requirement, you know, entry school requirements. Where Exactly. Yep. Oh. Okay, well, okay. The this is question thing is, uh, in New York City, apparently it was mandated to health care workers. Well, it, as far as I know, there are, there are no discussions. Have you heard of anything about that here in Florida? No. No. Um, that, I mean, that's, actually, that's a policy decision with New York. I would hate to interrupt you, sir, but that's actually not true. There's statewide, all throughout all 50 states, there's already the, the federal government has mandated that uh, if, they, if the WHO, the World Health Organization, declares a pandemic, that they can forcefully vaccinate us. This is, it's not fake. It's not a, it's not a lie. That's why the, the young lady's got a, her, huh? The World Health Organization. They're the ones that are declare the pandemic levels. Uh -huh. If under our federal government guidelines right now, the way that the federal government is run, if the World Health Organization declares a pandemic, and this is all factual, you can go look it up in the Library of Congress. It's all over. You can see it all over government websites that once the World Health Organization declares a pandemic, we are our country because we signed a treaty and this is not a joke. They we lose our sovereignty under this treaty if there's a pandemic and they can forcefully vaccinate us. That's where these people, that's why there's questions and that's why it's come out because it's, it's factual. Like you guys, I'm not saying you guys are hiding anything. They're not giving you guys, the, the federal government is not telling you guys the full story. Mm -hmm. So like well, okay. the information they're giving you guys to disseminate is a little. Okay, I got, I got the idea what you're trying to say. Well, uh, just for correction, so I should tell you that the government organization already declared a pandemic. I was done last May 2009. Exactly, so, but th so that's my point. Clear. Once they declare and the pandemic. The recommendation from the federal government is that the vaccine is, is, is not mandatory, it's recommended. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's what it is. Now, the question. A Navarre woman is suing Florida's governor, attorney general, and the surgeon general. She's fighting a law that says if there's a severe public danger, the state can force people to be vaccinated. Channel 3's Laura Hussey explains why she's doing it. I nearly died from my first vaccine as a child, smallpox. They almost had to amputate my arm. Carmen Reynolds is now a retired lieutenant colonel. She says vaccinations administered during her 20 years in the military destroyed her bodybuilder's physique inside and out. I was in a neck brace. I was in arm braces. Reynolds says she suffered excruciating pain and her immune system was permanently damaged. While researching ways to protect her health, she learned about a Florida law that allows forcible vaccinations if there's a severe public danger. But I refuse to be killed by another vaccine. The law makes no exception for health conditions or religious objections. The only alternative is quarantine. Now, the statute says law enforcement can be called in if necessary, so Reynolds says it's entirely possible that someone's refusal to be vaccinated could bring deputies to their door. And any force necessary can be used to quarantine us or apply a vaccine to our bodies. Reynolds says that's why everyone has something at stake. You should be the ultimate determiner of, of your body. But when that is decided for you, when that right is taken away from you by the state and they supersede the right over your own body, that's when the rubber meets the road. In Santa Rosa County, Laura Hussey, Channel 3 News. The Attorney General's office has filed a motion to dismiss, saying that Reynolds has not been directly affected by the law. 
There will be a hearing October 1st at the Santa Rosa Courthouse in Milton. Independently, without representation, I filed um, a lawsuit in the state of Florida. Write this statute down. Um, this is a Florida statute on the books. Uh, 381.00315, parentheses 1, parentheses B is in lowercase b for boy, paragraph 4. A person can be forced by any means necessary to be tested, vaccinated, treated, quarantined, or examined. And this will be enforced by a law enforcement official in the state of Florida. This, this, is, this statute is on the books right now in the state of Florida. I filed a lawsuit last month, unrepresented. I could not find an attorney to help me. And this comes up for a hearing in front of a judge in the First Judicial Circuit, October 1st, in Milton. Um, judge, I can't remember his name, Rasmussen. He's retired military, just like myself. They are saying we don't have standing to bring this. The ACLU would not assist me with this case because they said until someone is at our front door or an edict has come down for mandatory vaccines, we do not have standing. But every citizen in the state of Florida has a stake in this suit. The suit is against the governor, the attorney general, and the surgeon general who declared the state of emergency in the state of Florida May 1st. So we were in a public health emergency. It did expire at the end of June. It can be extended. But the law is on the books, and all we're waiting on is for the mandate to come down. Yesterday, the, the FDA said it's okay to have mercury in the vaccines. They gave the blessing to have mercury in the vaccines. There is also aluminum in the vaccines. That's short-term memory loss for anyone that's not up on that. Uh, there is also squalene, oil, and water in those vaccines that contributed to Gulf War Syndrome. There's a correlation there. Those are used as immune-boosting super adjuvants in these vaccines to make them go a longer way so that we don't have to have a one, two, three booster. They can do it with one and send your immune system into, you know, superpower, which is very unhealthy for the body. Um, my local paper in uh, Fort Walton ran this as a front page story yesterday about my, my suit. Um, so pay attention, call your state representatives and your state senators and tell them you want a bill to get this law, this state statute, off the Florida books. 